How many times have you heard that modern humans originated from one small group somewhere in Africa that had some advantage over other populations? Was it language? Was it some more flexible and advanced style of cognition? Was it some improved capacity for abstract representational thinking? And they outcompeted and ultimately replaced all other groups to emerge as the one remaining Homo sapien group. Brace yourself. This story has been told and retold countless times over the last two decades, and now it looks like it isn't true. Yes, modern humans originated in Africa, and some 60 to 70,000 years ago, a group of those modern humans left Africa in a dispersal that populated the globe. But the idea that this dispersal originated from one small group that arose in isolation in one small part of Africa no longer looks like the viable narrative of the human career that it did a decade or more ago. The emerging view of the origin of modern humans involves a coming together of genes and populations widely spread throughout Africa, with modern humans being the final outcome of hundreds of thousands of years of pre-modern interchange. There, I've given away the punchline. But the story of how we got to this place is a fascinating one. The current re-evaluation of human evolution within Africa is in some sense a product of a previous debate within paleoanthropology between those who advocated that humans arose in place from pre-modern human ancestors all over Africa and Eurasia, called the multi-regional hypothesis, and those who supported an alternative idea, often called the recent out of Africa model or the recent African origin model. The multi-regional model in its original form has been convincingly falsified. But like a phoenix arising from the ashes of its own demise, its failure, along with other evidence, has contributed to a re-evaluation of human evolution within Africa and to a version of multi-regionalism within Africa that bears a certain resemblance to the falsified multi-regional hypothesis. What I'd like to do is to tell this story in three sequential videos. In this one, I'm going to tell the story of where we started several decades ago up to the end of the multi-regional recent African origin debate. Next week, I'll focus on the mixing between human beings and other ancient groups within Eurasia after humans left Africa. And finally, in a third video, I'll bring it all together in a discussion of what happened in Africa as humans became a unitary species. We will be able to see the emergence of a new kind of theory of multi-regionalism within Africa, one that is consistent with the mixing of populations that we see everywhere in human history that we look. Oh, and I have to tell you, in case you're just barely hanging on, the last video is the best, so don't give up here. Time travel metaphor again. There is something very surprising when someone steeped in the current evidence about the origin of modern humans looks back at where we were decades ago. I took a look at several books on the topic from the 1970s and early 1980s. I'm really glad that I kept ancient science books for historical reasons. Here are three of the important skulls that scientists were working with then. These were all found in the 1920s and 1930s. It's almost painful, but fascinating, to watch the efforts of experts meticulously detailing the known variation of Homo sapiens, trying to decide whether early skulls in Eurasia and Africa, which they were calling archaic Homo sapiens, represented a transition from primitive to modern humans. One early working hypothesis was that there was a developmental arc from Homo erectus to Neanderthal to modern Homo sapiens. Check out my Homo erectus video if you haven't seen it. Some researchers were studying fossil details for evidence that European Neanderthals evolved into modern humans in Europe. Armed with today's knowledge, the scientists' efforts but inability to find a workable solution is fruitless but understandable. They lacked an organizing principle through which to view this. There was no genetic data and fossil evidence was sparse and probably always will be. Through a process of imagination and inference, it was not hard to believe that we might be seeing the slow development of human features and behavior as we evolved in Eurasia. As an aside, it's not just the fascinating story of recent human evolution that grabs me about this, but the arc from this starting point to where we are now represents a beautiful and current case study in an emerging scientific revolution. 
Far more often we look back at such intellectual revolutions from a more distant remove, but many of the scientists involved in this work were around then and are still working. In many cases, their own theories have undergone radical alteration within the course of their careers. That's pretty interesting. Things crystallized in the 1980s. First came the proposal of multi-regional origin. In its original form in the 1980s, the idea was that human beings arose in situ from earlier archaic ancestors into modern forms. The implication was that the base population from which this development started was the ancestral Homo erectus populations spread throughout Eurasia. As of last month, Erectus first left Africa over two million years ago and spread into Europe, Asia, and even Indonesia. Some theorists believe that all human populations had gone through a Neanderthal-like phase. Africa itself was not given special consideration at this time. The modern geographical distribution of populations was viewed as having deep roots in the distant past. The origin of Homo sapiens per se might lie a million years in the past if we truly evolve slowly out of ancestral Homo erectus populations. In the middle of the 1980s, a competing model was put forth. Several scientists noted that the earliest fossil evidence for modern Homo sapiens was found in South and East Africa rather than in Eurasia. And within Eurasia, the oldest modern Homo sapiens fossils were in Southwest Asia and the Middle East rather than in Europe or East Asia. This was suspiciously consistent with a departure from Africa given the geography. Analysis of mitochondrial DNA began to accumulate in the mid to late 1980s, suggesting a recent African origin on the order of 150 to 200,000 years. Ironically, while this was later regarded as misleading and maybe wrong, it did have an influence in the debate. Things began to swing heavily in favor of the recent African origin model in the 1990s, as genetic and fossil evidence further supported this model. Subsequent work has found a classic pattern of genetic diversity. When a small group leaves a large founding population, genetic diversity is greatest in the original population. Genetic diversity is far greater in African people than in people anywhere else in the world. A way to think about this is that the emigrating population takes with it only a fraction of the total genetic diversity of the entire original population. In subsequent years, an expanding fossil record within Africa, coupled with the genetic data, has left no doubt of a recent African origin for our species. And no credible paleoanthropologist today holds to the former original multi-regional model anymore. What is significant about this? Several things. Humankind originated not from many sources all over the globe, but rather from one increasingly integrated population that emerged from Africa, fully human, possessing language, cognition, creativity, and by all evidence, human consciousness. The transition over the last several decades from confusion about our recent origins to competing hypotheses to a significant clarity represents an intellectual achievement of the first order. And as a scientific transformation, it's one whose history is still evolving in the present moment. We can observe today work that I believe in retrospect historians of science will study with keen interest. And finally, this work is significant in the way that work in paleoanthropology at its deepest level is always significant. The past is prelude. When we understand our history, when we understand who we once were and where we came from, we gain a new understanding of ourselves enriched by the long perspective of time. Watch part two next week. Be sure to subscribe and thanks a lot for watching.